Hi there, welcome back. Well, with so many mobile devices out there nowadays, on our desks, in our hands, on ourselves, in our homes, uh, we're looking at the most efficient phenomenon that made the, uh, the traditional perimeter security almost useless. We still can have a secure environment with so many mobile devices, but it's gonna be a bit more tricky, if not even a bit quite difficult. And one of the biggest trends I would say that you need to be concerned with when talking about mobile security is the one called BYOD, which stands for bring your own disaster. <laughs> no, it actually stands for uh, bring your own device. All right. Uh, intentional pun here because it's a practice where employees start using their own mobile devices to connect to the workplace and to do their daily jobs. Now, it's a huge game changer because in the threat landscape, using this, this approach of bring your own device means that we're bringing inside of our defenses. Often enough, we, we bring inside simple devices that are not so secure out of the box. And we use them, those devices, those personal devices, we use them more than any other type of device in our lives. So we need some bring your own device policies, very strict, are very coherent policies that allow your employees to bring their own devices to work and to use them for business purposes, but also not to frustrate them, <laughs> okay? So we need to allow everything to work in a secure manner, but without creating frustration. Uh, because bring your own device policy has actually been introduced, especially for this very reason, to allow users to work the way they were used to, to work with the devices they feel most comfortable with. So bring your own device policies have been invented because besides the security risks that these devices involve, the, this habit of bringing the devices in the workplace involves, you also have to be prepared to address situations uh, such as what do you do about lost or stolen devices that might have company data on them. And secondly, how much control uh, can a company have over your personal device? Well, it's probably not going to be 100% because then it's not going to be a personal device anymore. but since it's not also a 100% company device, where do you draw the line? Uh, well, if you have company data like emails, confidential files, contact information, sales information, whatever it is that pertains to that business on a personal device, then the company is going to need some kind of control. It's not just going to be you know, based on trust. And speaking about company control, you are bringing a multitude of devices into the company uh, based on a multitude of operating systems uh, with running a bunch of a ton of apps, uh, different versions of those apps, different configurations. How do you manage all that? Because un up until now, you knew that everybody was using the same, uh, the same type of software that was uh, delivered through the company network. You know, all the laptops, all the computers were configured, pre-configured by the IT department and you had some consistency in there. Well, as much as, as you could have, in theory at least. But now you're opening up yourself to a much broader spectrum of threats and potential uh, attack surface that you know nothing about. Another problem is what happens if the device that a person brought from home and, and started using it inside the workplace is involved in a security incident? What happens if that personal device was responsible, was involved in some way? How do you mitigate threats on those devices if you don't have complete control over them? Can you at least investigate something on those personal devices? What are the legal requirements for this? Uh, how far can you go uh, before uh, being sued for prying onto personal information that is stored on that, on that mobile phone, for example? So it's really complicated. Uh, and drawing a clear line between what is personal and what is um, business related can sometimes prove to be extremely challenging. And don't forget that we are actually bringing a large number of devices. So if we one day just decide that we want to allow everybody to use their own laptops, use their own mobile phones, well, starting the next day, the company network, the company infrastructure is going to have to accommodate a huge number of devices, additional devices that were not uh, considered in the first place when the, when the network was designed, perhaps. Can we handle all that additional traffic authentication requests? Now, is the Wi-Fi going to support so many devices or, or are we going to just denial of service ourselves? <laughs> okay. And nowadays, if we talk about mobile platforms, we basically have 
two large choices, two big choices here. Each operating system, of course, has their own weaknesses, their own vulnerabilities. And these days we're pretty much down to Android and iOS. Now, Android is at its origin open source, which means that there's a lot more flexibility for specific vendors to implement their uh, their own customized versions and customized solutions based, based on Android. We also have a more relaxed approach to app stores, to the sources where we can install the apps. So we can install apps directly from Google, uh, from third party sites such as Huawei or Amazon or Samsung. And the SDKs required to develop applications for, uh, for Android are quite open. You can run them on Linux, on Mac OS, on Windows, doesn't matter. We do have a lot of flexibility when it comes to software development. Now on the security side and also on the enterprise management side, we do have some options. I'm gonna mention just one of them here and that is Samsung Knox which is Samsung's approach for facilitating enterprise mobile management solutions on their phones. In other words, is Samsung's way of making your job easier when it comes to managing Samsung phones in your company. Also on the security side, since Android version 4. something 4.3, I believe, uh, Android has been based on something called the SE Android model, uh, which is very similar to the SE Linux model. It's an implementation of the mandatory access control of the Mac model on Android devices, which means that when an application is installed, you get the opportunity to decide whether it gains access or doesn't gain access to specific services inside of the phone, like uh, being able to read your contacts, uh, read your mobile messages, and so on. Now, one downside of the of the Android operating system is that given the fact that most vendors are the ones responsible for implementing their own updates onto their own customized versions of Android, it means that you'll have to wait for the vendor itself to implement a security update, just like any other kind of update, which means that security updates are going to come at least delayed, if not less frequently than in the case of iOS, for example. Now, iOS is a more closed environment. Everything is controlled by Apple and there's no such thing as third-party app stores, at least if you're not interested in jailbreaking phones. But if you are interested in jailbreaking, you're probably not going to, uh, not going to want to accept those jailbroken phones inside the company anyway. And then from a security perspective, uh, iOS devices are a bit less targeted simply because the environment itself is, uh, is much more closed much less open to the outside. So it doesn't really mean that out of the box, iOS is more secure than Android. It just means that there are much more opportunities on Android for attackers to find vulnerabilities that they can exploit uh, due to delayed updates, due to the fact that people perhaps just ignore uh, those security updates or simply because Android has so many implementations from so many vendors out there that it becomes quite easy and often encountered for a device to simply be abandoned. So it doesn't receive any further updates, which means that any vulnerabilities identified from that point on are gonna be there forever. Now, as far as centralized management in an enterprise, in a company goes about mobile devices, we do have a number of solutions here. We do have a lot of acronyms. Uh, in my opinion, these are somewhat confusing, especially since most of them don't point to actual, uh, let's say tangible technologies out there. Most of them are just concepts or types of policies that can be implemented. So a lot of the a lot of the acronyms that you see here on the slide are basically just marketing terms, but you do have to be familiar with at least a couple of them, at least for the exam. Now, uh, this this picture right here is taken from the from the website at the bottom, and I've just used it because otherwise just enumerating these acronyms here would not have made so much sense. All right, so if we were to focus on this picture for just a couple of seconds here, we're gonna find that the most solutions that we can find regarding mobile device management are in the middle right here, and they're actually called MDM, M Mobile Device Management Solutions. And these are going to address things like, uh, how are you securing your device, access to the device, like passwords, uh, biometrics, uh, pins, and so on. Uh, device provisioning, how do we add those devices to our company when, the, when, a, com when, when a person comes in the company? or when a person changes their own their own mobile phone or mobile device that they're they're using day to day a device grouping that is just a way to associate devices so that we can apply generic policies to certain groups of related devices location tracking of course careful with this one you might run into some privacy problems in here device health monitoring again this one is kind of like a posture validation 
So we're just going to validate whether the device has the necessary updates in place. And God forbid, if the device was jailbroken, we're not going to allow those in the, in the enterprise anymore. Why don't we want jailbroken devices or rooted devices in the enterprise? Well, because we are relying on some centralized mobile device management solution to keep an eye, to keep track of what those mobile devices are doing. Well, if the user has root access to their own device, then they would very easily bypass all those remote controls that we have over that device. So they could just report whatever they want. We, we couldn't just trust the MDM solution anymore. So if we give the users full control over their phones, we're not going to be able to trust the MDM solution any longer. Now, on top of this, we're going to find the EMM, Enterprise Mobility Management Solution, with, which are kind of the next level in abstraction from a management and control perspective. So this is where we're going to find things such as mobile application management. What kind of applications are you allowed to install and or to run on your mobile device? Uh, what's the, the source of those applications? Some companies might actually implement solutions that restrict the, uh, the the source, the app stores that you have access to in order to install the custom applications, restrict them to the company approved uh, application sets. And in some cases, there are situations where you can only install applications from the company's app store and not from Google or Apple. Uh, mobile content management, again, it pertains to what kind of content are you allowed to store on the device or are we allowed to share from the device careful with this one as well because if you're if you're storing i don't know facebook accounts and uh, instant messaging accounts as well as company sensitive files how do you containerize what is the business side inside that mobile phone and what is the personal side and how do you make sure that no information is going to pass from one one container to the to the next bring your own device all right, this is the generic solution that we've been talking about. And finally, mobile information management, uh, which also addresses uh, device tracking, uh, keeping track of the versions, the operating systems, uh, when they were last updated, when they were last used, on which networks, and so on. And finally, on top of all this, we have UEM. This is Unified Endpoint Management, which doesn't just pertain to mobile devices anymore, but this one now covers anything that we can call an endpoint. So all the devices that users use. Uh, they could be mobile devices, they could be non-mobile devices, doesn't matter. We basically have solutions here that try to address all the endpoints in your, in your en environment. So ranging from desktops to laptops to mobile devices to tablets, even, uh, even smart wearables, if those are allowed or have any relevance in your, in your company, everything should be managed under a unified endpoint management solution. And just to give you a couple of examples for MDM solutions out there, there are a ton, by the way. I'm just going to mention a couple of them. Starting with VMware Workspace ONE, this was originally called AirWatch. So if you ever heard about AirWatch, this is the new name of the same of the same solution, the same product. By the way, this is where you're going to find the, uh, the term of unified endpoint management as well. Now, most vendors out there are going to advertise their own solutions as unified endpoint management because it's the highest ranking type of solution, <laughs> the highest level one. Uh, so don't forget that any landing pages like these are written by marketing people. So don't be fooled by the terminology. Another one is from Mobile Iron. And finally, if you want to just have a look over how many of them are and maybe uh, maybe figure out who, what are the pros and the cons of each and every one, head over to one of these IT publications like PC Mac, for example. A lot of them create uh, these top and top 10 solutions each and every year. And they're gonna provide you a pretty good overview of what each and every one of these actually does. So you can see the AirWatch from VMware uh, is also listed right here using its old name, Citrix, IBM, Microsoft, Intune, AppTech, and so on and so forth. Uh, pick your your poison, pick your, uh, <laughs> your bring your own disaster solution. <laughs> All right, that's it about mobile threats. Now there's a lot to talk about, but the Cyber Plus exam doesn't go into so much depth regarding these mobile solutions. Keep in mind that bring your own device is a challenge on its own. All right, think about the, the necessary changes that you need to make to your company policies, to your security policies, and even don't forget to evaluate if the infrastructure is able to 
sustain that increase in the number of devices. Also, don't forget about the enterprise management solutions like unified endpoint management solutions, the enterprise mobility management solutions, down to the mobile device management ones. Keep in mind some of the differences between Android and iOS. And if you found this useful and informative, like and subscribe and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.